What countries make up Great Britain? <laughs> um. You've heard of Great Britain? Yeah. <laughs> if someone said they're going to Great Britain, what language would they speak when they get there? British. They speak British. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever met anyone who speaks British? No. <laughs> Can you think of any word in British? Um. No. <laughs> no? Like Mini Cooper? Oh, yeah, Mini Cooper. That's a British word. We're talking with Tyler Quiet. If you met someone from Amsterdam, what nationality would they be? Um, I have no idea. Amsterdamian. <laughs> Amsterdamian. <laughs> no, they wear wooden shoes. Who wears wooden shoes? Um, cobblers. <laughs> cobblers. <laughs> they so they'd be cobblers. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're talking with Lindsay Shanks. Lindsay, and you're a high school student as well. Yes, sir. What is the world's tallest mountain? It's not Mount Rushmore. No, it's not. Do you ever rest? Do I what? Ever rest? No. I'm, I'm giving you a clue. Oh. I really don't know. See, I asked you, do you ever rest? And you said, Oh, no. Mount Everest. Mount Everest, there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> You're talking with? Aisha Edivar. Aisha, that's a pretty name. And you're a high school student? Yes, sir. What are people from Denmark called? You meet a bunch of people from Denmark. I don't what are know. they? Denmarians? Denmarians. I don't know. Denmarians. <laughs> How many Great Lakes are there? Oh, a lot. Like a hundred something? A hundred. I could be wrong. Can you name all hundred? No. <laughs> I could be really Can wrong. Can you name one Great Lake? The Great Lake. The Lakes. Great Lake. <laughs> We're talking with uh, Nick. Nick, what do you do? Um, I go to high school. Go to on, high school. Uh, in Roy City, Texas. And what do you want to do when you get out? I would like to be a film director. Film director. Okay. You've heard of the English Channel. Yes. It goes between what two countries? France and England. England. Now, is there any way to get there besides by boat? I think there's like a bridge, like an, a really long bridge, and it goes under the water. So a bridge that goes under the water would be called what? An underwater bridge. Oh, how about a tunnel? Oh, yeah, a tunnel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We're talking with? Caitlin Wilcox. Caitlin, you're from where? Arkansas. Arkansas, okay. How is the school system in Arkansas? It's awesome. It's good. Mm -hmm. right, let's see how, it's really good. Let's see how good it is. How many oceans are there? Oceans? Yeah. I've only been to one. You've been to one? I've which, been to one. Which one were you at? Florida. Which one? An ocean. Um, which, which ocean did you go to in Pacific Florida? Pacific Ocean. You went to Pacific Ocean yeah. in Florida. How was it? It was good. It was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is the largest country in South America? In South America, Africa. Africa. <laughs> and where is Iraq? I don't know. Like South Europe or something? South I Europe. Know. I don't know. Iraq is in South, <laughs> so you go to Europe, you go South. Yeah, I don't know. What country would you find the Panama Canal in? Panama Canal. Is there a country named Panama? No. I don't know, is there? No, oh, is it in the U.S.? No. Why do they call it the Panama Canal, you think? Is there the guy named Panama? Maybe. There's a guy named Panama, and he did what? He made the... Canal, the Pan Canal. Panama Canal. If you're going down to use the Panama Canal, you're trying to get from where to where? One place to another. <laughs> <laughs> One place to another. Why, why dig it? It's faster. Faster than yeah, but from where does it go? Oh, Panama and and what? And France. I don't know. Panama and France. Where is Iraq? You know, we hear so much about Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> Iraq is in um. Afghanistan. It's in Afghanistan. We're talking with Mackenzie Maxwell. Where is the Berlin Wall located? In the former Soviet Union. No. Oh darn. Is the Berlin Wall still there? No. What happened? Um. Well, David Hasselhoff uh, says it was him. And what did David Hasselhoff have to do with taking down? I don't know. Berlin? I read. It. I saw it on E, and he said that he should be in the memorial uh, for the grave. Because oh, why? He, I don't know. If you met some people from Denmark, what are they? What would they be called? Denmark. 
a group of people in Denmark would be called Jewish people. Jewish people. <laughs> Where is the outback? The outback? The restaurant? The restaurant. The restaurant. Is there one around here? Um, I don't know. No, that's it. Okay. I don't know. Geoliteracy is a new term for a long-standing concept. Uh, we think of it as preparation for decision-making in the 21st century. It's all about helping people to make the decisions that they need to make that involve understanding and reasoning about their world. Geography can mean something very narrow, you know, because you know the capital of Pennsylvania. But geography is a huge thing. It's a handicap if you don't understand the world you live in. It was very well known as location, longitude, latitude, where things are in the map, memorizing capitals and states and that type of thing and the evolution of that to an analysis of why people build houses the way they do, why cultures develop the way they do, how our economic system is tied together and how we get things from one place to the other. We describe geoliteracy as consisting of three different components. Uh, they go by the three I's, interactions, which is understanding the world in terms of systems and how those systems interact, human social systems, environmental systems, how humans and environment interact with each other. The second one is interconnections. Uh, that involves geographic reasoning. That's about how one place in the world is connected to another place. What are the qualities of places that make them good places or bad places for doing things? And the third one is implications. And that's really about decision making. And that's being able to systematically reason through what are going to be the implications of any particular decision, how things interact, and how things are connected to make good decisions in the 21st century. Geoliteracy is just absolutely critical for the future of our society. We live in an interconnected world in every different way, from economics to peace and prosperity to the environment. Unless we prepare people to make good decisions about these areas, we're not going to be competitive in the world and we're going to have trouble sustaining our population. We need to know how we interconnect with each other and how a decision that I make can affect what happens in another part of the world. We have not invested in helping children to understand the world the way they're going to need to understand it in their adult lives. We are at an inflection point. We have to make some decisions. If we are a short-term culture that doesn't value well-reasoned decision-making, or we dramatically change the preparedness of our young people to make geographic and far-reaching decisions throughout their lives.